and SmackDown was down a little bit. Um, it looked like it would be well. The first hour was was well was well down as well, but the second hour actually did real well, which I guess is due to the Battle Royal. So, <laughs> how? I just I don't know how it did. People, I cannot imagine anyone being people, excited for a Battle Royal. Especially, we just had a crappy Battle Royal um, a couple days earlier, and they not went only that they gave us the list of of wrestlers, and like the whole the whole gimmick was. The one guy that everyone wanted to see in the Battle Royal wasn't put on the list to be in the Battle Royal. Yeah, but the um, that uh, that came like late in the second hour. It wasn't like they announced at the beginning of the show. If they announced at the beginning of the show, it would be different. But yeah, so we got... I mean, the key stuff is obviously that Brock Lesnar's back next week and that they're doing a new gimmick where the authority figures are trying to screw with Drew McIntyre, which is a entirely new storyline that WWE's never done before but like you know again that's what they're doing is they're repeating they're repeating the stuff from the past I mean that's what we're seeing everywhere they are but it's actually it's it's worse than the past because in the past you you know you sort of knew that you know Vince McMahon or whoever was in charge we have Adam Pierce and Sonya Deville and allegedly they are in charge but then they don't even know about Brock Lesnar. They don't know about Lesnar. And then, you know, Adam Pierce claimed that he didn't know who was going to be on the list. The list was going to be sent to him, which he may have been lying to Drew McIntyre. But, I mean, the big key is he suspended Brock. And so who brought back Brock Lesnar? Like, there's somebody else. I mean, presumably Vince. But, like, somebody else is is ranked above Pierce and Sonya. Yeah. And they're allowing Pierce and Sonya to fuck with the talent. But they're also, you know, bringing back. It doesn't make any sense. Well, it, it, you know, I mean, they made it pretty clear that, uh, you know, Vince thought that Pierce and Sonya were firm but fair. But you know, he would still overrule them. <laughs> I guess. And yes, the the battle royal at the end of the show. Everybody, there was a uh, Black Friday battle royal was the gimmick, uh, and it came down. Well, I'll give the list of talent. Okay, so right so, here. so so so. There was a Black Friday Battle Royal, and there was a Black Friday match on Rampage. But what made either of those different from any other Battle Royal or any other match? Well, they just had to have some sort of Black Friday. Well, the 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 Rampage one they explained was the Black Friday deal. Because the deal was if she won, if Rio won, she would get a shot at Britt Baker. But Why it was a Black Friday Battle Royal was not explained. But I guess that, that was the deal. If they won, they got a shot at the champion. But shouldn't that be the case in pretty much any match where you got the champion? Well, sure, Dave, but the, the whole point is the shows took place on Black Friday. That's why they gave him the name. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, that was the extent of it. Well, I mean, it took place on Black Friday. We also had a stale food fight, right? We had a, we had a, uh, we'll get to that, but here's the participants in this battle royal, which somehow did a great second hour rating compared to the first. Sami Zayn, Viking Raiders, Ricochet, Drew Gulak, Mansoor, Mace, Angel and Umberto, Jinder, Shanky, Jeff Hardy, Rick Boogs, Cesaro, Happy Corbin, Ridge Holland, Madcap Moss, and Sheamus. And the, earlier in the show, they'd done a match with Jeff Hardy, it was a uh, tag team match, and uh, Jeff Hardy won. It was Jeff Drew, McIntyre Drew McIntyre and Jeff Hardy versus Corbin and Madcap Moss. Yeah. So they're in North Carolina, and uh, Jeff Hardy wins this opening match. I was like, my God, somebody won in their hometown. And the fans were happy, and like everything was great. So they go to this battle royal, and they do the deal where the last guy in the ring is Jeff Hardy, and they play his music, and everybody <laughs> cheers, and then all of a sudden, it's announced that... In, actually, it's not even announced. It's not even announced. Zayn just shows him out over the top. Sami Zayn, who had gone through the middle rope, jumps back in the ring, and he eliminates Jeff Hardy. And, like, I should have seen it coming. Like, no one's winning twice in their hometown. You kidding me? So Sami Zayn wins. Sami Zayn is going to get a shot at Roman Reigns. They Oops. cut backstage, and Roman is literally slapping his thigh, laughing that Sami Zayn is the number one contender and that's when Kayla got in the ring and announced that Brock Lesnar had been reinstated and now Roman Reigns is all upset but I mean they pretty much completely ignored this Sami Zayn thing I presume he's going to get a shot at some point I mean Probably, it's got to be maybe, free on TV like may, well yeah of course maybe in the next week or two just as um, I could see it 
I, I had the impression it was next week, but it also could be the week after in Los Angeles. Next week is, uh, I don't even remember where next week Well, is. they announced Brock's on the show next week. Yeah. So I would not be surprised if, you know, Roman just killed this dude and then Brock made his big return or something like that. Easily, easily, yeah. But yeah. yes, it was not, it, it was, as far as battle royals go, I mean, it was all right. It was okay. It certainly wasn't like a, a great battle royal or anything. It was better like than the last one. Yeah, I guess so. And yeah, the the uh, opening match with uh, Jeff Hardy and and Drew McIntyre, good match with a babyface win. We had uh, an opening segment where where Paul Heyman was bullying Kayla because Kayla said there were rumors that Brock was going to be reinstated. So Heyman just went off on her twice on this show, which of course was a setup for Kayla getting to announce at the end of the show that in fact he was being reinstated. Yep. We had Cesaro beating Ridge Holland, which was just. Sort of there. there. Three-minute three match. Um, yeah, so Rich Holland. You know, I didn't expect him to do any good on the main roster, and I'm pretty much sure that... He, I mean, Just he got was, called up too early. Well, he wasn't even impressive in NXT. And, I mean, it's like and it's like he's thick, but, like, you know, you stand him out there, he wasn't that big compared to the, all the rest of those guys. It's like guys that look big in NXT, you know, it's the same thing with Cross. Guys that look guys that are like six one, and he's probably less than six one. But in NXT, because most of the guys are, or a lot of the guys are really short, they can look like big guys, and they come to the main roster, and they don't look like big guys. And it's like it doesn't matter if you're like really good, but Holland isn't really good. So he, you know, I mean he 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 got thrown out of the battle royal like he was nobody, and he lost a match in three minutes. And like the whole deal is, is I guess the whole you know the whole deal is, is he's. Um, Seamus' little buddy. So I guess Seamus needed a little buddy or something. I don't know. We had a um, we had a Thanksgiving leftovers throwdown. It was just a hardcore match with food on the outside. It was uh, Angel against Rick Boogs. And they did a spot where Umberto started playing the guitar to distract Boogs, but then Nakamura swept his leg, and so Umberto bumped through the table. But this distracted Boogs. Well, this table was the table was all filled with Thanksgiving leftover food. Yes. So, so it's like for so that's about as much as they did. That we didn't get the we did not get the traditional backstage segment food fight. Thank no. God. Well, we got something similar. But Boogs goes through the table, and then. Uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Umberto goes through the table. Booze is distracted, and Angel super kicks him, hits the wing clipper, and uh, gets the win. Then we had Charlotte coming out for a segment, and Michael Cole's asking her what's next for you. Tony Storm comes out, and they have a, a back and forth, and uh, Flair tries to attack her. Storm throws her outside, goes after her. Flair puts a pie in her face. Charlotte goes to leave, but then she comes back, and she she dares her to fight, and she puts a pie in her face a second time, mm-hmm. and then leaves. I was like, pie always supposed to, isn't the pie supposed to go into like the heel? You face? know, the, you're supposed to embarrass the heel with the pie, but they embarrass the baby face who already is not over. Yep. So she's got no hope. We had. Uh, um, yeah, I mean. She's still, you know, she's a place setter because they don't want to go right to, to Sasha Banks, you know, in the in the feud with Charlotte. So yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's like she has no hope. Liv Morgan has no hope. Um, I like how the new people have no hope, so we can go back to the same matches we've seen like fifty times. Rich Holland has no hope. We're little hope. I would say no hope. Um, yeah, most of the people have no hope. Um, but there you go. We had Sasha and Naomi versus Natty and Shayna Baszler and uh, ended up with Naomi pinning Natty with a sunset flip. We had uh, Sonya Deville there at ringside. And, of course, they're doing the story that Sonya hates Naomi and, of course, uh, Sonya denies it. So, of course, they got the reaction shot of Sonya Deville not being happy when Naomi got the win here. Uh, but that was it. Then it was that in the Battle Royal, and that was the entire show. Mm-hmm. We know that uh, Edge is back on Raw Monday. Yeah. So I wonder who he's going to do a program with. That's a good question. So it's probably... If they're bringing him back now... Well, I mean, Seth Rollins is there. But 
Seth is going to wrestle Balor, but that doesn't mean that the program. Yeah, but they just did with. that whole feud with a blow off. I mean, we're really going to go back to Edge and Seth Rollins? Pr- probably not. So Edge is, Edge is probably going to be babyface. So what heels do they got right now? I mean, they got Seth, they got Kevin Owens. Um, they got anybody else? I'm sure Kevin Owens is wrestling Big E on the show, which we just saw two weeks ago, I think, right? Let's see. Yeah, Seth Rollins, which, by the way, we have uh, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. Yeah, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins, too. On the show. Yeah. And uh, Edge returns, and then, yeah, it's uh, Kevin Owens and... I'd have to Big look e. at the whole thing. Big E and Kevin Owens. I'm talking, I'm talking the uh, heels that we've got available. Yeah. Um, I guess it could be a. I guess Edge could return his heel. Who knows? No, that would be stupid. Well, if you have no, if you have no heels from to face, then it would have him come back and face Big E. You I could guess, have him face yeah. Big E. You could do him. You could you could do that. But Big E, they you could blow off Kevin Owens. I could see that they blow off Kevin Owens and put Edge in the place because they don't want to push Kevin Owens if they think he might be leaving. There's always that chance. All right, let's see. So Raw, as far as top heels, we have got... I guess we got AJ, but he's teaming with Omos. Yeah, they're still doing the tag team thing. I I don't know if I would consider Apollo Crews a top heel right now. Or Austin Theory. We got Lashley. Could be Lashley. Lashley's not doing anything. So they could set set something up with those two. And Kevin Owens. The Miz, if he returns eventually... Mm, that's a waste of it. Don't Edge, think it should but... be Omas. That would be a bad idea. Yeah, that's it. That's your top heels on Raw. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, Working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.